Have you ever heard or asked yourself why people shrink when they get older? What's going on there? Maybe even thought, what does it feel like? It must feel awful. And more importantly, what can I do to avoid this from happening to me? But first, here are a few vital things to think about or to note about height loss. Females shrink more than males, and after the age of 40, you could potentially lose one quarter to one half inch every decade. And according to new research, uh, you begin shrinking, get this, as early as your 30s. There are two primary reasons to cause people to shrink as they age, and both of them have to do with the spine. And first is the loss of the disc space, which is the space between the bones or the vertebras. And secondly is the loss of the vertebra or the bones themselves. To illustrate what we're talking about here today, I'm gonna to have to use a little bit of anatomy. I'll keep it real light. Uh, if we look at the human spine, here's a model here of what a human spine looks like. You have uh, tuba bones cut into 24 movable pieces and in between the bones are these what they call shock absorbers or discs. Now you have the brain here and the brain feeds all the communications to and from the body through this tube of bones and then between these bones are nerves and these nerves go to every organ, every cell, every tissue. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens when you have uh, bad posture, for example, you're sitting all day in a complacent position or if you have an injury to your spine, what happens at the cause shrinkage in the body. In the first phase of uh, spinal degeneration, you, what happens is you start losing the natural curve of the spine or it's altered. And fortunately, this does not necessarily mean that it, that it has any specific specific damage to the spine. However, it does tell us that there is a difference in the disc space, as you can see here, and usually there's no pain or symptoms associated with this phase. So at phase one, if you have a proper chair, a good mattress, a great pillow, and practice good movement techniques, there's an excellent chance of reversal. However, without this, the spine will continue to misalign, which leads to phase two of degeneration. So when we go from phase one to phase two, this is when you need to get serious since there's only a real small window for pushback here. Uh, the symptoms could not, should not be ignored. As much as you get misalignment in the spinal bones as this continues, the natural shape of the spinal column is lost and the spaces between the discs be, be, begin to narrow and your range of motion can be limited. You, you wake up feeling stiff and achy and sore, you have fatigue. And this is the stage when damage done to the disc and bones may be irreversible. So when you go from phase two to phase three, uh, it, it gets really, really bad. The, the spine fusion will begin. Uh, the damage from bad posture will become permanent in this, in this phase. Degeneration of the spine worsens. In this stage, you'll begin to notice a severe loss of height. You'll feel chronically tired. You'll have restriction of motion permanent scar tissue and permanent bone deformation starts. At phase three, both physical and mental start problems start to kick in and you find yourself becoming dependent on health professionals, uh, physios, chiropractors, doctors, pain relief, you name it. And, and I want you to think about this. If you look at what's between these bones are nerves and blood vessels. So if these things get cut off, these nerves go to not just your muscles causing pain, they go to every organ, every cell, every tissue. So think about this. Let's say if this nerve is going to your stomach, if we cut this nerve off, your stomach doesn't work. But if it's being choked, it's like a dimmer switch and it's breaking down the, the information to and from that tissue to the brain. And so it's, it's, in other words, in computer terms, it's garbage going out and garbage coming back out and you just get garbage. And if we look at what's happening here, there's 14,000 studies, folks, 14,000 studies linking poor posture to, to depression, uh, heart disease, diabetes, you, you name it, just about every chronic disease known to man. But nobody's connecting the dots. And the reason being is when your spine starts breaking down, you start choking off these nerves and these nerves go to these organs. It's your wiring system that starts breaking down, which causes disease. And then stage four, in the final phase of our stages of spinal degeneration, when you get to stage four, your quality of life and longevity has been threatened. Uh, bone and neurological damage could be permanent at this point. The vertebra, the bones become fused, seriously restricted, you're in chronic pain, you're just living you're just existing and it's it's a really bad place. Folks, I hope this never happens to any one of you out there. The, the, the point of this whole video is to avoid this. You, you never wanna go there because at that point, you are reliant on surgeons and, and all the drama surrounding all that. And so let's, let's focus on some really good solutions here. So let's break this down. My subscribers might remember a previous video that, of mine that I made in terms of reclining chairs. And in this video, we looked at how certain angles that we sit on create 
uh, massive amounts of pressure on your discs. And as you can see from this diagram, the closer you are to a standing position, the less stress on your discs. And since so many people slouch out there, or they, they sit anywhere between an 80 and 90 degree angle, this means that you're placing in an extra, get this 40 to 90% more pressure on your discs and your joints all the time. And if this is you, you can expect a lot more than a half inch of height loss in just a decade. Then there's not the sleeping properly. Uh, not keeping your spine in the perfect alignment is the primary factor in damaging both the discs and the vertebra. If you don't have the right folks, if you don't have the right pillow, or if you don't have the right mattress, these are two of the biggest investments of your life, you're just not gonna get the perfect alignment and that will lead to pressure on both your discs and your joints. And the thing to remember about sleeping is that if you're sleeping out of alignment, or even in an awkward position, you might not even realize it until you wake up the next morning and then the entire day is off. So something to remember is that the solution of both of these predicaments is getting both your posture and alignment right. A big myth is people think that they can just grow bone by just drinking more milk. And I really haven't found a credible study on this. The problem with calcium, especially calcium carbonate, is that it may increase the risk of heart attacks in postmenopausal women. And what most people don't understand about minerals is that we're only talking about a very small piece of a much larger puzzle. So besides posture, which I already spoke on, let's look at what else may cause shrinking with age. Okay, so let's go through a, a few really good points here and things you should think about, okay? Number one, lack of bone minerals. And a solution to this would be always take like the dark green leafy vegetables or calcium from that or, or high quality organic grass-fed dairy, uh, magnesium supplementation, boron, or you can get this supplement called, it's called, now get ready for this, microcrystalline hydroxyapatite. Wait, that sounds like a mouthful. Okay, but I'll make it real simple for you. Simply put, it's a thing called MCHC, uh, Mary, Charlie, Henry, Charlie, and MCHC. And you can buy this at any of your local health food shops. But just a word of precaution, if you're a vegetarian, this, it is bovine sourced, okay? Uh, lack of vitamin D3. And if you're gonna take vitamin D3, you want, always wanna take K2. And the best source of this would be the sun or through supplementation. And if you're gonna take these, take them in the morning. Just trust me on that one. D works in unison, unison with a K2 and is D3, and both of these are fat-soluble vitamins. K2 mostly comes in two forms. There's an MK5 and there's an MK7, and evidently MK7 is better. Uh, there was a Japanese study in 2012, and they found that MK7, so when you're looking at the bar, uh, the, the, the back of the jar, uh, you wanna look for MK7. They evidently found it's better for you because it has a better bioavailability, okay? Whatever. Okay, number three, low estrogen. And when your estrogen's low, it's, it's simply hard to build bones. High cortisol, and this could start breaking down your bones. Low protein, oh, so, okay, so low protein, what about that, simply put, if you're not getting enough essential amino, the essential amino acids, you just simply cannot build tissue. Uh, no exercise, and exercise is great, uh, and it really helps prevent bone loss. Now, let's say a little caveat about that. What we're talking about in terms of exercise is weight-bearing. It's something they call the piezoelastic effect, another big word here, but it's just the, it's the vibration, it's the shock, and that helps stimulate the osteocytes, the, the bone cells, to grow. Okay, low growth hormones. And so here's the thing, again, as you age, you lose your ability to make growth hormone. So how can you maximize growth hormone and prevent shrinking with age? Okay, so number one, keep your insulin levels low. Uh, you might try like a keto diet or you know low carbs, low sugar, high protein and good fats. You could try a thing called intermittent, I know this is trending right now, intermittent fasting. And in a real simple way, you know, without all this thing, you, you eat when you're hungry, but, but the key thing here, a real simple way to do it is just skip breakfast. Uh, get more sleep and less stress. Okay, that goes without saying. Exercise, and again, again, it's the weight bearing which causes the growth, okay? So things like swimming or yoga, these things are really good, but they're not gonna help you with the weight bearing. A great thing would be after your meals, take a nice brisk walk. Take the stairs, uh, you know, you know, maybe a light jog. Anything that's going to cause stress in your on your bones, that's going to that's going to grow grow bone.